Hello, I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed. Welcome to the American Conservatory Theater's Spring Forward Fundraising event. Thank you for tuning in to support our arts community during a very difficult time. Arts and culture are essential to building vibrant, thriving, and engaged communities. For over 50 years, ACT has been doing just that. Your support tonight will help the artists and workers who call this theater home. Many of them have been heavily impacted by the coronavirus, and your support will make a difference in their lives. I look forward to the day when we can all gather together and share the magic of live theater once again. Thank you for contributing to ACT and your support for our local artists. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey.
Hi, I'm Jennifer Bielstein, Executive Director of American Conservatory Theater, and welcome to Spring Forward. So you just got to enjoy the cast of our unfortunately canceled production of Richard O'Brien's The Rocky Horror Show. It had been set to go into rehearsals just as we had to shelter in place. And that fabulous cast is made up of entirely local San Francisco Bay Area actors. We wanna give a special shout out to the Rocky creative team for putting this together. Director choreographer, Sam Pinkleton, associate director and co-choreographer, Ani Taj, and music director, Ada Westfall. Thank you all. So tonight we all come together from inside of our homes, but connected through technology and most importantly, connected through theater. Theater that unites us, that inspires us, that gives us hope, we're really grateful to be here with you and thank you for making time to join us. And we can't wait until we can gather again with you in person. But tonight we'll celebrate theater and how it does bring us together. We'll raise funds to support the work of ACT. We needed you before and with the devastating impact of COVID-19, we need you even more now. You're critical to our ability to produce and create amazing theater on our stages, to deliver high caliber training to young artists, and to our work in schools and community centers across the Bay Area. And your support is also essential to the individuals who create this work. We are an organization made up of people. It's our artists, our artisans, technicians, and theater workers. And so many have lost employment because of COVID-19. So we're really proud to partner with Theater Bay Area tonight. And a portion of every donation will go to Theater Bay Area's Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund. We'll share more about this with you shortly. And now we wanna take just a moment to honor and recognize the leaders of Spring Forward. We have our amazing co-chairs, Jareen Ongeko and Patrick S. Thompson, and our hardworking event committee members, Jesse Lee Eller, Rebecca Kakis wolf Tony Ratner-Miller, Susan Manazian, and Abby Saden schneer Thank you all so much for your great work on behalf of ACT. And now, Please join me in welcoming your MC for the evening, San Francisco local, co-creator and host of Freestyle Love Supreme, Anthony Veneziali. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, wow. What a kickoff to the beginning of this gala, or as we say in Australia, gala. I'm Anthony Veneziali. Yes, one of the co-creators of Freestyle Love Supreme. And I am here live from my company Speechless's studio and uh, super lucky to be here and to shelter in uh, an empty studio that we have. I'm honored to be hosting tonight's event where we'll be celebrating our local theater community and focusing on all the fantastic artists and art making affected by our current crisis. Tonight, me and the folks at ACT have some fun virtual tricks up our sleeves with guest appearances from Tony Hale, B.D. Wong, and Ellen McLaughlin. And some exclusive musical performances that shine a bright spotlight on all the local talent here in the Bay to keep you entertained while also raising some much needed dough. Now, tonight's fundraiser is a double whammy. By donating throughout the evening, you'll be supporting ACT's robust programming, including its education and artist training programs, all of which serve over 200,000 people a year, as well as, and here's the second whammy, the Theater Bay Area's Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund. It's a program for and by Bay Area arts practitioners who are facing a loss of income due to the COVID-19 crisis. To talk a little bit more about the Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund, I'd like to introduce you to some folks from Theater Bay Area, including TBA Executive Director, Brad Erickson. Because of COVID-19, I lost all but one of my jobs. I lost every performance contract I had lined up through the end of the year, including thousands of dollars of revenue for performing with ACT. Uh, this has put a complete stop to any live performance work that I might've had lined up uh, anywhere from uh, local community farmers markets to festivals, both grassroots and on the major circuit. In response to this pandemic, Theatre Bay Area has partnered with Dancers Group and Intermusic SF to create the COVID-19 Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund. 
in another version of this world, I was going to be working at Oregon Shakespeare Festival this summer. This fund is available to any performing arts worker that has lost expected income. This is my last month in my apartment, and I don't know where I'm going after this. Weighing out if I could afford that is never something I wanted to do. My doctor, without testing, diagnosed me with COVID, potentially, and so a lot of the symptoms have been alleviated by medicine from the TBA grant. Thank you, Theater Bay Area. Thank you, Dancers Group. And thank you, Intermusic SF. Right now, we have an opportunity to save the Bay Area performing arts scene by funding performing arts workers. Help us put food on their table and keep a roof over their head. The average donation size to our fund is just $200, so this is truly a grassroots movement. I am Theater Bay Area. We are Theater Bay Area. We are Theater Bay Area. We are in this together. In solidarity. We rise by lifting others. So As some of you may know, tonight was supposed to be a live in the flesh event at August Hall, ACT's annual Spring Fling. So I wanna just take a moment to shout out some of the big supporters from that event, many of whom are tuning in tonight. Thank you. Our lead supporters, Jerry and Tao Dodson, Jareen Ongenko and Jorge Del Calvo, Tony Remby, Linda Jo Fitz and Abby and Jean Schneer, Franny Flyshacker, Kevin and Celeste Ford, Yasha and Rebecca Kakis Wolf and Patrick Thompson, Robina Ricciatello, and our lead sponsors, Hilton Union Square, Park 55, and JP Morgan Chase and Company. And thank you to all of our other many generous supporters. And this just in, uh, we got this, this news this morning, and we have some really, really thrilling news to share. Jerry and Tao Dodson have pledged $50,000 in matching funds for all gifts that come in tonight. I mean, that is a huge give. And well, I created this thing called Freestyle of Supreme and it's all about freestyle rapping. So I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to do a little shout out slash freestyle for Jerry and Tao. So here goes nothing. Mm. <laughs> Oh yes, how do we do it now? We do it with Jerry and we do it with Tao. We do it from the Dodsons who just came in to give us some cash so we can bring live theater back to the Bay. So thank you very much for what you gave today. So that's just a little freestyle, a little kick, a little something. And you know what, before I send you over to our next musical guest, I wanna have a little fun throughout the evening tonight. So for every donation of $100 and more, I'm gonna do a little freestyle shout out for your name. And we had a cocktail party leading up to this from like 5.30 to six o'clock and some people in that gave. So here's an example of what these little shout outs might sound like. All right, here we go. Yeah, just take it from Susan Waters, Jeffrey Richardson, and maybe their daughters. Chris Barker, what you gonna do? Floyd is a rocker, yeah, him too. And thank you, Catherine, all in the huff. But now I gotta go back to Hufflepuff. Cause that's the sorting hat put me in Hufflepuff. Anyway, so that was five names. That was just a little quick shout out for those amazing, generous donations of $100 or more. And if you donate $1,000 or more, you'll not only get a shout out, but you'll also get entered into a special raffle. Now in this raffle, one lucky winner will get an original song about them composed and performed by yours truly at the end of the night. It's not just a prop, I brought it for a reason. You can donate through our mobile cause page or you can also text ACT to 91999. That's 91999 to donate. And now I'm excited to introduce the cast and creative team of ACT's almost production of Poor Yellow Rednecks, Viet Gone Part Two, the anticipated follow-up to ACT's smash, smash hit production of Viet Gone. The love story of Kwong and Tong was moving from the Strand Theater to the Geary, reuniting much of the same cast and crew. Here to introduce a number from Poor Yellow Rednecks is director Jaime Castaneda and playwright Qui Neguin. 
Hey, I'm Jaime Castaneda. I'm the director of Port Yellow Rednecks. This is Diego Castaneda, and he's the assistant director of Port Yellow Rednecks. Say hello. We're both really super sad that we can't be there in San Francisco next month to share this production with you. Uh, we love San Francisco and we love ACT and we hope you'll support ACT during these difficult times. And uh, they're out there supporting artists and we hope you'll support them. Uh, Shami and I and the cast have put together a, uh, a track that we wanted to share with you. We hope everyone's safe and healthy. And now I'm gonna send it over to Kui, the playwright, and uh, we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye, bye-bye, look. Hi, I'm playwright Kui Gwen. Uh, just want to send my love out to you, San Francisco. Uh, and I also wanted to introduce you to this song that uh, Jaime and Shabby made. It is the last song in my play, Poor Yellow Rednecks. It's a moment in the show where my mom asked me, uh, why did you write this in the first place? And I answer it for in verse. Uh, this is my kid, uh, Felix, who is respecting my time and space while I do this. And uh, I have another kid who's like right there, he's a little mad at me. Ah! No, sorry. This. So my kids can witness a tale where the yellow kids become the protagonist Instead of some white guy stealing the spotlight Which makes my little guys feel less than those other guys Yo, I don't wanna tell them Hollywood's failed them When I flip on a screen, I wanna see them So I put my pen to the page with my eyes to a name Take the yellow stars from the sky to light up a stage So step back, suckers, I'ma fight till I get it Anything less than excellence, you can fucking forget it Me and my peeps coming at you you can read it on Reddit These stories and allegories My people's actually bled it Fuck anyone Try to make you talk different They listen now It's hard for me to talk to my parents They said assimilation Has some good merits But the cost is quite a lot Just to sound generic So I'm telling the story Celebrating the story Spitting lyrics with meaning To elucidate the story For they deserve glory All the peeps who came before me For busting their ass Just to make a home here for me So throw in your smooth shit. You know you wanna do this. We kicking Maisie's like a Shaw Brothers movie. Stand up, homies, show us your pride. Fuck all the haters. This moment is our time. thrive in this foreign land but today we're gonna do whatever we can to create a place where we all can stand to find all the haters who say we can even if they mad at you you gotta be true to you every scar you wear you show the shit that you went through you gotta stand, stand strong, strong be strong and strong get yeah. wrong so come on listen close this is a fight song We're climbing mountains while the rest of them are sleeping Have pride in us, son, listen to our reason We're climbing mountains while the rest of them are Four yellow rednecks We demand respect Ain't got a lot of money But we're still damn perfect Hey there, Tony Hale here. How's it going? I'm in Los Angeles, and I was recently in San Francisco doing the play Wakey Wakey uh, at the Geary Theater for ACT. And it was definitely one of the most exciting and challenging experiences of my entire career. I absolutely 
loved every minute of it, even the terror of getting on stage after 17 years of not doing theater. Um, some of my favorite, uh, I think some of my favorite memories, well, I mean, obviously working with Pam and Andy and Will Eno and Annie Kaufman and, and Joy, all those wonderful people at ACT, I just love them. And we had such wonderful times. I love San Francisco. I actually got this sweater at Old Navy in San Francisco. Um, I think probably one of my favorite memories is talking to the students at the conservatory. I was able to kind of, Andy would ask me questions and I was able to kind of share lessons I've learned and mistakes I've made after being in the business for so long. And I just loved getting to know them, I loved it. Um, I know tonight we are um, raising money to support the arts. And I'm telling you guys, in this season right now in quarantine and with everything that's going on in the world, what is everybody doing at home? We're all watching TV, we're watching movies, we're watching plays online, we're watching choirs on YouTube. That's all art, all of it. And we need to support the arts. This is a prime example of that, how necessary it is to our world. So please do what you can and uh, have a absolutely wonderful night. Okay, stay safe, bye. Okay. Thank you, Tony, and beautiful sweater. I've got a matching one. All right, so the fundraising is off to a, a rapid start, and apparently people want to do the shout-outs. So I'm going to do another round of shout-outs right now. I'm going to try to get it right. Uh, there's a lot of names here. I'm seeing them for the first time right now, so forgive me if I mispronounce your name. All right, here we go. Boots. <laughs> All right, now I'm uh, gonna get this right for Rabina Richatello, getting in it just like Othello. Jen Jennifer Turner, <laughs> gotta earn her spot in the line. I'm like Kim, that's all right, Emmanuel Lim. Gonna get back to it just like him or them or she or Zed. I don't know. I don't mean to make so many presuppositions. Okay, James and Karen Wagstaff. All right, yes, I have to laugh because Catherine Huber got a lot of hubris. Renee Savage, Franco, do this. Len Nathan, okay, well then, what can I say about Wade Warrens? Yeah, they're scoring. Kieran Vasawani, oh my gosh, yeah, gonna do it like I was mommy. Gonna yell at Sophia Burke to clean up her mess. Denise Brousseau, I hope I don't stress you out with your Kevin Hickey. Thanks so much, wanna just get sticky like Ann Cochran. All right, that then. Okay, stop, pop, pop, like I was Julia Pappard, like... Oh my gosh, dang, was that Jean-Luc Picard or Stephanie Brown? This is hard. Brenna Moorhead and Renee Fitzgerald Palacio. I hope to go on and on like Sharon Salzburg, because in Austria, she is heard. Don't forget Linda Frank, Haven, and Lennon Ruiz. Last but not least, I have to do this with Steez, because Paul LaCourciere, I'm pretty sure I messed up your name, but there you go. <sighs> Okay, we got a whole bunch of shout outs in on that round. That was 20 names, we did it. Now, for those of you just tuning in and wow, I hope not, but if you did while that was happening, good luck. Welcome to ACT's virtual fundraiser, Spring Forward in partnership with Theater Bay Area. I'm your MC this evening, Anthony Venizziali from Freestyle Love Supreme. We were just on Broadway. And look, there's more exciting performances and guest appearances coming your way. So stick around for the fun. And you can still donate through our mobile cause page, or you can also text ACT to 91999. I'm doing special shout outs for donations of $100 or more. And if you donate $1,000 or more, you'll be entered into a raffle where one lucky winner will get an original song from me at the end of the night. Remember, Jerry and Dow Dodson are matching everything you give up to $50,000. So please consider donating. I want to especially thank three groups of dedicated supporters who organized their own mini fundraising teams to help provide additional support for tonight. They are Tony and Don Miller with Joe and Julie Ratner, Abby and Jean Schneer with Linda Joe Fitz, and Yasha and Rebecca Kakis Wolf. Thank you so very much. So far, those three groups have raised over $40,000 for tonight. Congrats, and thank you for the teamwork. 
teamwork makes the dream work. Now, I'm thrilled to introduce our next special guest, ACT Artistic Director, Pam McKinnon. Pam, thank you so much. For, uh, is that you? Pam, are you in there? Yeah. Hi. I just went for a walk. What are you wearing? It's uh, it's my, it's my errand. It's my, it's how I run errands in the neighborhood. I, I feel like the Invisible Man, but it actually is kind of a look. I mean, the sunglasses are particular to the event, of course. Oh, that's the gala. That's the virtual gala that dress up. Yeah, that's the nod to the celebration. But hey, uh, Anthony, it nice to see you. Really, you. Hi, Hi, Pam. How are you? First and foremost, what's going I'm on? Fine. How are you doing? Things are good. Things are good. I mean, things are ridiculous, but they're good. Um, yeah, you know, I, I sort of oscillate between, you know, yes, we can, we got this. Up next is nothing but success. And uh, I want another piece of cheese, right? That's sort of, those are the, those are the, the What's the your go-to cheese during quarantine? What's like the go-to? I mean, it's pretty basic because sometimes, you know, the the errand is to the little, you know, the closest little deli bodega. And so it's like some supposedly sharp cheddar, but it's not quite sharp enough. I'm doing um, a lot of goat but, cheese and then marinating yeah. them in oil that I like add stuff to. Just inside a lot. Cor quarantine Good. hack. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we're, fi man. we're finding things, right? We find things that maybe we didn't do before. Yeah. 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 I've been watching a lot of chef's table and I feel like I try to make every meal like kind of amazing. And my kids are so unimpressed that I've decided to start giving myself uh -huh. meh Michelin stars. So however many times I say meh, I'm like, oh, I got two meh Michelin stars today. Yeah. Kids. They're definitely not into <laughs> Uh, uh, they're the worst. If I were to be locked with anybody, it would not, I would not want to be with my kids, but I am here we are. And here you are. And Pam, speaking of being here, like that is it, right? This, this whole thing is kind of forcing us to be in the moment, to be like present. How are you staying present during all this? What's, what's going on for you? Yeah. I mean, I love, I actually truly love the ritual of 7 PM leaning out my window and using this spoon, and you can see the damage, using this spoon to bang on this lid to celebrate, you know, our EMT workers, our first responders. Um, last night, as I was leaning out the window doing that ritual, um, a, postal, a postal worker was making a delivery, and he it was for him. It was basically for him. Um, I love uh, that there's a, a four-year-old kid um, who leans out the window and shakes a toy along with my pot banging and people, you know, joggers take little, you know, iPhone movies as they walk by. Um, and I will say I'm not the only person doing this on the block. I will say that just so people don't think I'm like the sole crazy person where, I, you know, it feels communal. It feels, you know, that, that we're applauding. It feels both at once theatrical as well as the flip side of that. We are the audience applauding, you know, the people who are, who are putting, you know, in some cases their lives on the line. It feels viscerally important to be part of something right now. And I, and that's what I crave as a theater maker, as a theater, you know, goer, to be viscerally part of that collective. Um, so those are my moments. That's what I grab. I grab my 7 p.m. out the window celebration. Um, when was the last time you were on stage, Anthony? Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really then begs the question of what's a stage? Because... I think we're kind of rewriting a lot of those rules in some way, but I think the last time I was like on a thing in front of a big audience was probably for the, uh, maybe at Sundance for a, a, a premiere of a, of a show, of, of a film about Freestyle of Supreme. Um, mm -hmm. And it's this documentary called We Are Freestyle of Supreme and, and they flew the crew out to kind of do a performance after the premiere. So that's, that's probably the last show I did. Okay. And can you yeah. tell me a bit about Freestyle Love Supreme? Yeah, so uh, Freestyle Love Supreme is this improvised freestyle rap concert. And uh, we did a Broadway run earlier uh, in 2019. We, we kind of ended in the middle of January of 2020. Uh, and mm -hmm. we were at the Booth Theater 
which I know you're familiar with as well. Love the booth. Uh, so we got to do a nice run there on Broadway. And we- Oh, Bree, 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 Bree. Is this the right, is this the right chat you wanted me to join in on? Because I mean, I-, I, I nope. No, it's the right that, one. Hey, nope. Bree, what's up, mama? <laughs> Totally different thing, bud. What's happening? <laughs> hey, everyone. Chris Jackson just joined happy us. Happy quarantine. <laughs> I don't think that's – no one says happy quarantine. What's up, ACT? Hey, we have to make it a happy quarantine. Come on. You just made it a little happier. We can't get in the theater right now, but we got a plan for tomorrow, man. We got to do some things. Things that people are going to be leaving their homes eventually, and they're going to need to come to the theater because theater is church, and we need it. Yes, That's all I'm saying. I just had a sip of bleed. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, everyone, uh, you may or may not know uh, Chris Jackson from Hamilton. Uh, he was the president. Uh, he still is my president. Uh, anytime I need inspiration, hey. I actually think of Chris, and I go to him. Uh, Chris... Freestyle Love Supreme, Pam McKinnon. We are talking about Freestyle Love Supreme, and you, I guess, must have a sixth sense. But Pam, should should we tell the world about this thing, or what are we supposed to even do anymore? Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna figure out we're gonna figure out how to get freestyle uh, to ACT uh, and on the Geary stage. We just have to. Yeah, there's some things to do, but this just has to happen. It just feels, I agree with you, Chris, that theater is church. I agree with you that there's something uh, just so essential and necessary and we'll come back together and we will laugh and we will cry. We will share stories. We will build stories together because um, that's what we do as a right. species. It feels so fundamental to say, but I believe that. Have to. Absolutely. And Chris, why Why do you think maybe Freestyle of Supreme uh, could be sort of like a just a nice moment for San Francisco theater going audiences in 2021? What are, what are we going to bring? Well, first of all, I think we're going to bring folks who love the theater. And I think we're going to bring a lot of folks who don't even know the theater yet. And this is going to be maybe one of their first theatrical experiences. And what they're going to see is a group of uh, folks who will be on that stage literally bearing their souls to bring a smile to their faces. It is, uh, it's a melange of hip hop and theater and zeitgeist current events. Uh, nothing is, nothing is precious except the people that are there to enjoy it. And, uh, it is, it is jazz. It is improv. It is, it's, it's what we do in the theater. It's the essence of what we do. Um, so we get to interact with the audience, uh, every show, there's this guy named Anthony Beninciali. We call him two touch. He's kind of good at talking to folks. He's kind of good at pulling that info from them and asking them what they love, what they hate, what they maybe don't like so much. What are their most embarrassing moments? Then we, we then we make us, we, we basically do a musical every night. We tell all the stories to music and to, to rhyme and it's wonderful. We have a great time doing it. And this was, you know, four months on a Broadway stage was just a warm up. We ready to hit the West Coast. That's great. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The Bay Area is, it, you know, as far as we are, are concerned, this is where we need to like start our tour. So if we were to start anywhere, yeah. we wanted to do it here at San Francisco. And Pam, we're such big fans of you and of your work and of ACT. So if there's anything we can do, let us know. We can't wait. And President, thank you so much for joining us and for being here. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I can't wait to see you dressed in those drapes a la Vivian Lee the next time we meet up. That's cold, but it is what it is. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Awesome. Stay safe. See you later, Chris. <clears throat> wow, I apologize, Pam. I did not think he had the link to th this at all. All right, Chris. I like, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. I like Chris. I generally actually like have a wooden spoon whenever I interact with Chris as well, uh, but in a different yeah. way. Yeah. Um, well, Pam, uh, before we sort of move on to the next segment, uh, any last things you want to share? Any any insights, any words of wisdom or, or things to, to help us hold on to in these children? You know, I'm, I'm such a, you know, uh, 
a, a direct a rehearsal hall kid. Um, let's let's bring a little bit of a play into this into this event. Um, I'm gonna um, just read like three sentences from a Terrence McNally play. Um, Terrence passed away um, from COVID-19 about a month ago. Was um, my first acquaintance to to pass away. Um, but you know his his words are strong and they live forever. Um, so here's a quotation from um, Frankie and Johnny. We have a chance to make everything turn out all right again, turn our back on everything that went wrong. We can begin right now and all over again, but only if we begin right now, this minute, this room and us. Can't wait to be in a room with you, Anthony. Can't wait to be in a room with all the people that are tuning in right now. Um, and let's do this. This is this is part of life. And you know, this is this is a chapter. And uh, and we will turn the page and be together soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for everything that you do, for being a part of the, this amazing, vibrant community and for leading ACT during this chapter. Uh, now, remember, you can donate. Uh, you can text ACT to 91999. Uh, you can uh, ask Pam to do her best Francis McDormand impersonation <laughs> if we have time from Fargo. Uh, you also can find mobile calls there in the bio or on the chat. And now here's a very, very special artist near and dear to ACT in San Francisco's heart, B.D. Wong. Hi, I'm B.D. Wong. I'm the president of the ACT fan club. I performed on the Geary stage in 2014 in The Orphan of Zhao, directed by Carrie Perloff, and then again in early 2019 in Lauren Yee's wonderful play, The Great Leap, just a little hair over a year ago. And I have a lot of great memories of ACT, not only as an audience member, I was brought to ACT as a high school student by my great drama teacher, Zora Chanis, Lincoln High School Drama Department. We went many times and it really formed a uh, huge core of the, um, of the, of the energy that, that made me become an actor. So I'm very thankful to ACT for that ex inspiration. Since performing on the stage uh, at ACT, I, I think my favorite memory is probably going to be um, the way that my mom was treated by everyone at ACT and the administrative staff, um, er everything about the, the experience of, of, of how my mom integrated with the theater was just priceless to me. I just loved it, the way Carrie and Pam and, and, and the house staffs, uh, the st house staffs treated her. Um, there's nothing like knowing that your mom will be treated like the queen when she walks into the back of the theater. So thank you, ACT. I have been thinking a lot about the power of gathering and um, how one gains an immediate profound appreciation for the power of that gathering when that gathering is forbidden. And that here we are in a, in a moment where we're actually thinking about what gathering means to us and how badly we need it and want it as human beings. And we gather for so many different reasons, right? We gather because uh, we just simply want to share the company socially of other people, to be with them, to touch them, to, to be near them, to be near other humans. It's, it's, a, it's a very natural um, thing that happens. And um, we also, as by an extension of that, we, we gather to share each other's ideas, to ponder life and to uh, communicate with one another. And in, of course, the elevated uh, way in which we do that is in a darkened room watching a play where gathering creates a forum for the sharing of ideas and the um, changing of perspectives or the um, consideration of the human condition in a time like now where we are really thinking a lot about what we can or should or will do as a community to move forward from a life-changing experience 
to rebuild. And so an institution like ACT becomes absolutely vital. Um, I think there's a lo- real strong misnomer that has haunted me my whole life about, well, the arts are really not that important. And then you really see, um, with the, when it comes to the sharing of ideas or the, the, the sense of being a community, how all of these things come together in a theater, these ideas of what is absolutely vital for civilization to survive and to flourish and to thrive. They all come together in a theater. And so ACT really deserves um, the support that it needs to continue to thrive, to continue to do that work for that noble purpose. Um, Not just for entertainment or diversion, which is a part of it, but also for really, for me, the sharing of ideas and, and for artists to be able to express themselves and for that expression to create inspiration. So I, I want to just say thank you to ACT for the many, many years of, of community service that, that, that it has provided for me and for my community, but also to encourage everyone to contribute to ACT to, so that it can continue to be able to do that. Um, I couldn't be more enthusiastic about um, wishing the best for ACT at this time and, and um, rooting for it because great things uh, are to come there and if we can um, if we can see that day when, when, when we'll be able to gather again and we'll be able to um, celebrate that I think that will be really something great to celebrate thank you if you couldn't tell by now ACT means a lot to the Bay Area so you can help us by donating and you can text ACT to 91999. That's 91 and then three nines. Kind of like a non-emergency emergency for the arts. You can also hit one of the donation links to our mobile cause site below in the video bio or in the chat feed. Every donation matters. There's special shout outs that we're probably gonna be rolling out through evening. So if you feel like getting your spot blown up, donate awesome so we are looking for people to give and speaking of people who give i want to introduce you to an amazingly talented wonderful human being who i'm lucky to call my friend she is a teacher at the mfa program for act she is a beast of an mc please welcome ryan nicole austin hey what's happening love 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 hugs and kisses and <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> uh, we're socially distant, but emotionally close. Always. Ryan, thank you so much for making time and for joining us uh, on this here, what we're hoping will be the award-winning virtual gallop for the year. I don't think there is an award for this. <laughs> um, I have to make one. Ryan, let's just start with all the most important stuff. How are you? How is your family? Everybody, all things considered, it's amazing. I feel like this is actually a very good time for us. No, not to be calloused with, you know, what other people are going through, but um, it's really good to, to get close to my, my young one and uh, my husband in this time. So thank you for asking. Everybody's well. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I have two uh, little people as well, and I also have an amazing partner. And uh, every day is the longest, hardest, best, worst day. <laughs> Um, homeschooling. What can I say? Oh my God. Yeah. I was not cut out for it. Um, Let's not go down that one. But speaking of things that people are cut out for, uh, you were cast in the most recent show, uh, that ACT put on Tony Stone. Yes. And you know, there's obviously a bit of trauma around it. Would you mind talking to us a little bit about the experience with Tony Stone and, uh, and what happened for you? Man. Well, let me just start by saying it, it was literally my favorite show. Not just saying that because these are the people in the room, but really the, my favorite show in my entire career so far. Tony Stone, great show about a the first, it's a, you know based on history, the first woman to play uh, professional baseball with the guys. Um, and I had the opportunity to understudy uh, the exquisite Don Ursula um, for the role of Tony Stone. And we had a, a, a long run of previews and a great opening night, which we found out backstage at the end of that show was the closing night. 
we actually found out that night that we were closing on Sunday, but by the time we made it home, the mayor of San Francisco announced that uh, gatherings above 500 were no longer allowed. So, and as you know, Gary's Theater holds more than 500. So that was the end of our, our, our show. Um, it was heartbreaking. And, and for those lucky enough to have caught it, uh, would you mind telling the people at, you know, who are watching, what do you think was the, the thing you were most proud of around that show that, that you want as many people to know about as possible? I love the fact that this was an African-American woman who had roots here in the Bay Area. That's what I really love. You know, she played for the Negro League. She played for semi-pro. Um, but she, she finished her time here in the Bay Area. And that just makes me really proud. She threw out the first pitch at, a, at a Candlestick Park. She's got real Bay Area connections. Great woman. Uh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So Bay Area connections, uh, what we mean to the community, what ACT means to the community, and what the MFA program means to the community as well. So you teach there and uh, you're responsible for some pretty amazing projects there. <laughs> Would you mind letting us know a little bit about, uh, you know, one or two of the different things that you do with the MFA program? Sure. Well, uh, last year I got invited into the family um, and was brought on to lead the ACT's MFA 3 cabaret event. So the, uh, every year the, uh, the Masters in Fine Arts students do a cabaret and these final year students um, had an opportunity to do a show that really resonated with them. And so we decided to remix the traditional cabaret into a hip hop you know, mix of show tunes. So cabaret nice. is traditionally regular show tunes, but we decided we're going to flip that up and just reverse the script. We didn't know if it was going to work out, but it was a rousing success. Yeah. Flip it and reverse it. Yeah, no, you know, Missy, baby. <laughs> Speaking of Missy, the, there was The Rain. So we did The Rain by Missy, uh, remixed with Singing in the Rain. And I think we'll get to see a little bit of that later. Uh, we Before had, we I, watch that, do you think maybe I can ask you a favor? Uh, sure. I don't have right, any money so here. I'm lucky because <laughs> I get to know you through freestyle. So we've right. kicked bars before. I know you've gone through some stuff with David and made commercials for ESPN and <laughs> all these amazing things. Would you mind telling us maybe a little bit about, you know, ACT and the MFA program in a freestyle flow? Uh, sure. Why not? Could you imagine if you said no? And we're like, uh, uh, I know. Uh, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> what the heck? What do we do now? <laughs> All right, great. I'm going to put a, I'm going to, let me know if you can hear this. Sounds good. Yep. Nice. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> Talk about ACT MFA. Please. All right. Well. <clears throat> Pretty dope program, I do have to say, ACT, MFA, it's across from the bay from me, because I am in Oakland, as you can see, or maybe you can't, but it doesn't really matter, because they're one of the number one programs in the country, for actors, that is. Yeah, ACT, they run the biz. They got a real fresh faculty, real dope teachers, everybody, I just like to see or have a seat at their feet and learn, soak up the wisdom, you know, my turn anyway. Woo. Let me tell you, ACT MFA is dope in the Bay. They got actors that come out and they lead, you know, from the top of the top. I mean, they are stage like at Berkeley Rep and Cal Shakes and um, places like, I don't know, Wheels on Wheels anyway. Let me tell you, let me say, ACT MFA is the best place hands down, okay? And they advance social justice, and that's what makes them really fresh. Let me bust this. I mean, this is why they're dope. Everyone knows that they bring the hope to the students and the ones coming up. ACT, y'all, what's up? Mm. I just want to pop my collar one time and say, ACT, you make me rhyme. You make me go off the top of the dome one time. And I'm just going to sit back here and recline and watch you continue to grow and do great things. I really thank you for all the love you bring and all the joy. And everybody, make sure that you say what's up to my boy, A.V. That's it, right? I think that's Ooh. it. That's enough. <laughs> it is. You guys know how great this program is, right? Uh. Yeah, you know how great it is. You can always tell from the alumni like Denzel. Ooh, what? Maybe you be grinning. Maybe you be winning like you was a net binning. Ooh, come on. 
Or get it, get Anika it. Noni Rose. She got really fresh, tight flows. I mean, the girl can sing and she can act, and they all came from ACT in the back uh, in the day, right? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> love it. Oh One my love, gosh. man. One Ryan. love. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. But Joe, before we finish the hip hop, let me tell you. Yes. The folks should see what actually is happening and what happened in the Lyrical Cabaret. Yes? Yes. Can can we see a thing? Yeah. So the rain show is getting ready to happen right now with Kimberly Holcamp and Emma Van Lair. Check it out. Let's go to the video. Dope. <laughs> so good. Oh, Missy would be so happy. I oh, love it. Thank you so very much. And we are like right at seven o'clock here on the West Coast. So if you're near a window or a door, let's go ahead and, and cheer our first responders and our front line, uh, all the people working on the front line. So go ahead. It's, it's going to be seven o'clock in like 10 seconds. So get to your window, and uh, even if you're on the East Coast uh, or somewhere, anywhere outside of those, shout out the window. Okay, I'm going to my window over here. Ah, 
Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me in uh, giving some mad love and respects to all those heroes on the front line. Now, your generosity tonight has supporting amazing collaborations between the MFA program and Electric Bay Area artists like Ryan Nicole. So thank you for giving. And speaking of giving, we've got some more shout outs to do. Let's do shout out round number three. We got 20 more names. I'm going to try to make it through. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, Greg and Pat Wright, you do it right all night like Jenny Fong. We get it on Vivek Vaynogopal. I hope you're watching, y'all. Oh, my gosh, could we do it like Megan McClintock? I don't think on the TikTok. Mark Connolly Bishide, I hope I said it right. I probably didn't, but that's all right. Helen Marcus, thanks for helping to spark this. Tiffany Redman, yeah, like Redman. Okay, then I'll be Black Thought then. Lisa Fung, get it going on. Michael Couch, get it off and sit up. Debbie Chin, double end, gonna get a win. Jeffrey Richardson, how could you drain those threes? Laura Fischette, I hope you don't forget that Joy Redmond might be related to the other Redmond. Robin Lee, what you gonna do just like we? Frederick Drotus, I think Dronus. All right, Anne-Marie Lonsdale, grown-ups. Brad Erickson, like Leaf. Daniel St. Germain, Gordon Relief. Jer Jeffrey Panza, I have no pants on. No, I do actually look at that, my leg, son. All right, Mary Topliff, gonna do the next spliff. Oh my gosh, Mary and Natalie Townsley, Tony Remby. I can't forget the. All right, that's the last name in the shout. See, whoo, okay, we got lots of great names, and that's wonderful. Thank you so much for giving. And remember, I'm doing those special shout outs for donations of over $100. And if you donate $1,000 or more, you'll be entered into a raffle where one lucky winner will get an original song from me at the end of the night. So please consider donating as we have to match that $50,000. You can text a donation to a, you text ACT to 91999, or you can hit one of the donation links to our mobile call site below in the video bio. And now, I'm excited to segue into a very special interview with ACT's Community Programs Manager, Stephanie Wilborn, and two inspiring arts education changemakers. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Wilborn, and I'm the Community Programs Manager within the Education and Community Department. It's so good to see you all. Since 2011, ACT's education and community programs have served more than 40 partner schools and community-based organizations here in the Bay Area, reaching about 21,000 individuals annually, most of whom would not typically have access to the arts. Through our Act Smart program, ACT provides numerous local schools and community-based organizations with the intensive and short-term teaching artist residencies workshops, theater tours, career panels, special student-only matinee performances, which we call SMATs, and an annual touring Shakespeare production, all at low or no cost to the school or community-based organizations. Each week, ACT and the amazing teaching artist, Lauren Kivowitz, works at Access SFUSD, along with Heidi Sarton, the special education department head within Access SFUSD, the ARC. It's a unique special education program within the San Francisco Unified School District that serves students with disabilities ages 18 to 22 to learn functional skills within the community, discover their passions, unlock their potential, and become involved members of their own communities. And welcome, Lauren and Heidi. It's so great to see you two. How are you two doing? Great. So far, so good. Good. All right, I'll just jump right in. It. Um, Heidi, can you tell us a little bit more about Access SU SFUSD and how is it different from other classes? So Access SFUSD, as you said, supports students with disabilities who are not on graduation track. So our students get four additional years of high school. And what we want our students to take away from our program is sort of discovering themselves and finding out who they are all while building independence. So for students that involves getting paid internships, working in the community, learning the value of giving back and volunteering, 
but also discovering their passions and figuring out what their hobbies are. A lot of our students come to us thinking, oh, I want to work at Walgreens because that's the one thing they got to do in high school. They didn't realize that there's so many opportunities and that life is not all about work. It's about what do I like to do for fun in my off time um, and being able to foster their creative side and the amount of skill building that comes with the ability to um, experience creativity through the visual and the performing arts. Thank you. Um, do you mind if either one of you can kind of take us through the process of your lessons and what are some school, um, goals that you have with your students? So we do the first half of the year just playing games, developing a really strong ensemble. And then the second half of the year, we spend devising an original piece of theater um, inspired by a theme that the group chooses together. So this year, our theme uh, was community. Last year it was boundaries and the year before that was power. And my overall goal, as far as the students go, is just to really make sure that every single student has a really strong sense of agency and ownership over all of the material that we create collectively and, and in their own level of participation as well, that they each feel comfortable to participate in the way that they best can. And it's always really, really fun. That was great. Thank you. I know when I'm teaching as well, I really want everyone to see all the potential and all the beauty that I see in my students. So is there anything that you wish people know about your own students, you know, outside in the community that may not know about the work that you all do or what your students bring as well? I think there's this really harmful, uh, pervasive myth specific to autism, but it also does encompass all folks with disabilities, that there is some lack of imagination or creativity. And I just think that is so, it's harmful. It's the most wrong piece of misinformation. Um, I, I see my students and they are all so creative and so eager to just engage in their creativity. And I, I love that they're, that they're willing and able and excited to show people that that is a myth. Yeah, I think a lot of the students that we work with with the population 18 to 22 didn't have access to a lot of the arts experiences in high school. When you think of students with moderate to severe disabilities, a lot of the times that other students are taking electives, they're taking life skills and social skills, and they're not having the opportunity to be in drama or ceramics um, or in band or choir. So they come to us and maybe that's not one of their interests because you don't get to have an interest when you've never been exposed. Um, so making sure when we people say, you know, I'm not an artist, that everyone has the potential to be an artist and everyone has the potential to be creative and expressive. Um, and as Lauren said, don't, don't think about individuals um, and define them by a diagnosis or label. Um, look beyond that and look at first before you limit students, allow them to share what they have. All right, thanks Heidi and Lauren, and thank you for your ongoing work with Access SFUSD. You both do some amazing work, very inspirational. And thank you everyone for your ongoing support within our community and our residencies. So thanks again, and we'll throw it back to you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Um, it's good to see you, Sam. Great to see you. What are you um? What are you up to? Well, first, I just wanted to tell you my name is Ani Taj. Um, I'm a choreographer and director working in New York City, and I was just sitting here thinking about the show I was going to do with you at ACT. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Oh, your theme of Rocky Horror, the, the show that, yeah. Well, I'm also a New York City-based director and choreographer and was really excited about uh, making Rocky Horror with you at ACT. What, one of the best experiences I had at ACT, and also one of the only ones, but it's one of the best nonetheless, was the day that we did the open call on Halloween. Best, best day, best possible day. It was a day. great day. And people came in from all arenas of the performance world of San Francisco in wild costumes, because it was Halloween. And they brought in radical versions of themselves and offered something that I think we were really excited to start building a show with and to kind of learn about how to build a show with them. Um, since neither of us are from San Francisco, we were excited to learn about it with those people. And 
ACT did a really bang up job of providing a space for us to do that and to do it differently than it usually is done in open calls and auditions. So that's that's something I remember really fondly. Yeah, did I've you, always thought like, like San Francisco, as a visitor to San Francisco, it's always sort of been Oz. Like it's always been this dreamy version where strangeness and uniqueness and possibility and innovation can happen. And I feel like ACT, every encounter we've had with them has supported that and has said like, hey, even when the world is upside down, this is a place that can contain everything that makes San Francisco what it is. The beautiful and the grotesque and the hilarious and the absurd and the open call and the process leading up to Rocky Horror felt like we had the privilege of making something that I think um, felt like San Francisco. And I just have to believe that any institution that can offer that space to a city is like top of the heap right now and always. And I feel very, very lucky to be in the, in the ACT universe. Totally separate from any moment in history, I think we will need spaces to come together with people who do not necessarily look and sound the way we do. Uh, I, I, I feel like ACT is actually providing an essential service to the community and I can only believe that that will become more essential as the need to gather, the need to assemble, the need to um, like look at somebody and say like, hey, I'm here, this is my story. You haven't heard this story before. Uh, that actually can provide a kind of healing that the Epsom salts that I'm looking at can't. And uh, I feel really excited for the love of creativity that's going to be required to, to make those spaces in the future. So thanks, ACT. Thanks, ACT. ACT. And thanks to all of you who have donated so far. Your donations go a long way to support thousands of students and community members throughout the Bay Area to create with dynamic teaching artists and educators and apparently supporting artists in bathtubs. Hashtag bathtub artists rise up. Now it's time to do some more shout outs. So we're on round number four of those who are donating $100 or more Yes, I got to step my game up. So here we go. Round number four. Barbara Weismer. Yeah, is the wiser. Drew Jude. I think I'm that dude. Pam Adenoff. Ticking some Adderall. Anyway, Trista Berkovitz. All right. Yes, I'm going to blitz. Like Norman Abramson. Okay, then. Uh, Shirazade Langlade. Oh my gosh, Gam Dave. Okay, Ashley Dalzell, like you was named Darwell. Mignon Wood, I think I just should get a better dictionary to pronounce your name. Dale Albright, overnight, yeah, right. Sam and Ginger Brown, not that turquoise color. Ralph Snodgrass, in that front place. I'm in the past. Barbara left, not to the right. Erica Floresca. I'm like Florent lights. Thank you, Jeannie Balch. Oh my gosh. Victor Malanana Maug. Neil Bray. Okay. Adrienne Traceman. I'm just they sin or maybe trying to misplace them. Marion Peters, like my repeater. Cecily, Chris, and Daniel Peterson. Thanks very much, Fiona Baker, for making the taker like Brian Prothera. I think I said it the terrible. Sandra Halliday. All right, Holiday. I think that's the end of the list. Okay. You were all amazing. Thank you so very much for giving. And so we all are aware we are only $15,000 away from our $50,000 matching goal. We are really close and we have about let's say 25 minutes left. So if you're just tuning in, I'm doing special shout outs for donations of $100 and more. And if you donate $1,000, you'll be entered into a raffle where one lucky winner will get an original song from me at the end of the night. Now I'll be doing the raffle right after this next performance. So hurry up and donate. You can donate by texting ACT to 91999, or you can hit one of the donation links to our mobile cause site in the video bio.
All gifts up to $50,000 are being matched tonight by the ever generous Jerry and Dow Dodson. So please donate. We've got a few more exciting surprises for you. So stay tuned, including the special raffle, which I'll pick right after the next performance. So if you'd like to enter the raffle for an original song all about you, performed by this person, and you've got $1,000 or more to drop to support the arts, do it now. And now, please welcome the director of the Young Conservatory, Jill McLean, who will introduce our next truly heartwarming performance. Hi, everyone. I'm Jill McLean, director of the Young Conservatory. In the YC, we offer professional theater training for young actors ages 8 to 19. These performers, who come from all over the Bay Area, represent the incredible talent and work ethic we strive to build in all of our training programs at ACT. And the support that we receive enables us to provide partial and full scholarships year round. To share some of this talent, I'm very pleased to introduce our renowned cabaret program, middle and high school students, nearly 60 of them, in a very special reimagined Try to Remember from the Fantastics, featuring our graduating seniors as soloists. Enjoy. I mean, how, how do you even follow that? And follow. What a delightful performance by those young artists. Remember, your donations tonight go directly to programs like the Young Conservatory, which trains and engages thousands of Bay Area students each year, exposing them to the arts, creativity, and collaboration. 
All right, I'm about to pick the winner of our special $1,000 raffle. So if you want to join in the fun and possibly rent, win an original song about you performed by me, do it right now or forever hold your peace. But before we do that, I've got another round of shout outs for our friends who have donated $100 or more tonight. Here we go, round number five. <laughs> oh man, this is getting super hard. Ah. <sighs> All right, Philip Crawford, yeah, did it. Elizabeth Halperin, gonna win it. Free to Scott, give it what you got. Donald Philman, fill it in, fill then. Douglas B. Evans, heaven. Zichotl Santalan, all right, Tom and Sandy Farley. I hope you just gonna call me. John Simpson, what you glimpsing? Anita Woits, okay, no, that was Wotiz. I almost blow this. Catherine, Kathleen Hill, over the pill. Peter Garinani, gonna get it on me. Allison Elliott, yes, Elliott, okay, okay, Elliott. Lori Jaffe, gonna get some taffy in my teeth. Nancy Heavey, all right, Weeby, doing this thing like Karen Stevens, Dennis Yen, okay, then with Patricia Pearson and Lindsay Sayer, all right, Mayor, London Reed at the beginning of the feed, Judy sitting, not sitting on her lapels or laurels, no, because Margaret Zabel just got, gave another bit of hundred cash, Michelle Miller gonna fill the coffers with what you gave, John and Charles Morris, thank you for this chorus, and John Mc McCarthy, okay, yeah. oh, everybody have a party with the homie John McCarthy. Yeah, gonna, gonna, gonna have a party with that homie John McCarthy. <laughs> oh, wow. These shout outs are going to be the death of me. So that was shout out round number five. And now, friends, the time has come to select a lucky winner among the generous donations of $1,000 or more throughout the evening. We have a total of 17 names. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh, 17 people who have donated $1,000 or more. And you know what? You have given so generously, even though there's only one winner, I'm going to run through the list right now because that's just too, we, we have to. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Let me clear my boots and a nana nana camp and boots and a bad and a camp. Jan O'Brien and Craig Hartman. Okay, then Rod Marimore. Just bring it in. I want some more. Jennifer Bielstein and Shane. All right, Spalding, do it again. Curtis Wilhelm, like Kaiser. Anyway, just gonna find the wiser. Deborah Taylor Barrera. Oh my gosh, I miss you, girl. Martin Tannenbaum. Gonna get it on. Gonna find. Find that like I was fine bomb, Robert Fager. All right, Plager. I'm not Diane Hoge, but I get this like I was in the loge. Thank you, Neil, for pairing that or perishing. What did you forget? S. Fisher. Gonna wish you a good birthday when I see sister Robert England. Oh my gosh, I hope that's not Freddie, but I give her what I got. Morris Myerson. All right, I'm again gonna do it like Holly and Chris hollering back because I ain't no hollering back. I ain't no hollering back, girl. Catherine Hassan, like Hasselhoff, got a reason. Just going to wrestle off Patty and Rusty Roof. Like, whoop, 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 roof. Lisa Fung, all right, yes, they brung Robert Ford to the forefront. And that was what the people want. They gave us a thousand more more. Thank you so much. And now, whoo, let me put these names into a hat. And I will... Shuffle up the names and pull out a random name. It looks like the winner is Neil Pairing. Neil Pairing. Neil, we are going to give you a call. Our team is going to give you a ring in just a moment. So that way we can bring you on the live feed and I can ask you a few questions so that I can actually make a, a song really actually about you. So please be by your phone or your computer because we're going to be calling you, Neil, in a few moments. Thank you, everyone, for all tuning in and for your generosity. We're in the home stretch of our fundraiser, but we have one final fundraising challenge. We're going to do what's called a lightning round of final donations, which will be generously matched up to $5,000 by our dear friend and supporter, Fred Levin. In, or, in honor of his late wife and beloved ACT board member, Chair Emirata, Nancy Livingston Levin. 
So please, I hope you'll consider giving what you can to support ACT and its various programs and Theater Bay Area's Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund. You can donate by texting ACT to 91999 or our mobile cost site in the links below. We've got one final video for you all from the amazing artists from our ACT main stage, MFA program, Young Conservatory, and community programs. Theater is so important to our daily lives. And you'll see for yourself why we need to continue supporting these stories and people. And after this video, I'll be doing that song for Neil. So please check it out and I'll see you in just a moment. One of my favorite memories uh, of ACT, and there are actually quite a few, but one of the things that I really treasure uh, about the community at ACT is the ritual of first day of rehearsal and walking into uh, the rehearsal hall that is chock full of people, all the people who make a play possible. Um, and the enthusiasm and the sort of chaos and the loud room and the laughter um, and, and the reunions that all happen in the space of that first day. Um, it's a beautiful ritual of welcoming. It's not just welcoming new artists uh, into the room, but it's also actually, I think more importantly, welcoming a new piece of work that is about to be born inside and because of the people who are all gathered in that room, all hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. <laughs> I love the first day of rehearsal. Back in 2001, I was in the cast of Harold Pinter's Celebration and The Room at the Geary Theatre, and we had our first preview September 13th, two days after 9-11. Uh, we weren't even sure we should be doing a play, or whether anybody would come see it if we did. And what happened? Almost 900 people showed up to watch these plays. and their reaction, their cathartic, explosive laughter was such an expression of, yes, we are here, we are alive, we are together, and we will not be beaten down. Our humanity will not be taken from us. Our community will not be shattered. onto the Geary stage doing Rhinoceros and having to put one of those <laughs> big <laughs> rhinoceros heads onto my head. And I remember feeling so uh, ridiculous and absurd. And at the same time, it feeling so right and being so proud to be back onto the Geary stage. Last time I was there was over a year ago when I was in Edward Albee's strange and wonderful play, Seascape, directed by Pam McKinnon. And I had the great good fortune of being married for a couple of months to a man I love. 
and an actor I admire, Jim Carpenter. And to get to play every night with the loveliest pair of lizards you could ever hope to meet, Sean Gallagher and Sarah Nina Hayen. <laughs> we had the best time. I have never laughed that hard in a rehearsal hall. And for an actor, it really doesn't get any better than that. It was also great to be part of Pam's first season and to feel the vitality coursing through the building as we were all part of the beginning of that adventure, her artistic directorship. It's a, we are in the business of presence. So to be deprived of the ability to gather is a great deprivation. And I realize now, as I have never realized before in the long, long career, how fragile and yet how mighty this medium is. So to close, I'll just say, I'll steal a line from Tony because I don't think he'd care. Bless you, ACT. More life. The great work begins. Woo. Okay, so we are here in the final act. And apparently I have to do some heavy lifting. But if you'd like to support the arts and you can donate, now is the time. Remember, we are doing a final lightning round of donations matched up to 5,000 by Fred Levin. So hurry and get your donation in. Now, what would live uh, broadcasting slash YouTubing, FaceTime facing the odds you know what I'm saying. B, without technical difficulties. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get Neil on the line. So we had to pull another name. And so we have a different winner. It is Rod Marymore. Rod Marymore is going to be the new name. So we desperately tried to get a hold of Neil, and then we pulled another name, and it was Rod's, and I think we have Rod on the video. Rod, are you there? I have cheese, Gromit. <laughs> oh, wow. Only in the real world would something like this happen. <laughs> cheese, Gromit. Uh, thank you, Rod. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm so excited. Great. Okay. Well, first and foremost, Rod, how are you? How are you and, and your loved ones doing through all of these just very trying times? Well, we're doing we're doing just great under the circumstances. We are sheltering in place in Sonoma, California, and we are fortunate to have a beautiful view of Sonoma Mountain and a vineyard of Chardonnay, and we're we're happy that our whole family is together. Oh, wow, a vineyard of Chardonnay surrounding you and your whole family surrounding you. Uh, so would you mind sharing with us uh, who, who what, what's the family? Well, our son, Miles, is uh, uh, a fantastic young man of 27 working on his MBA. And our daughter, Mikhail, is an actress living in New York City, but she's here with us now, thankfully not living in mid Manhattan at the moment. And so we are all happy. We're safe. And under the circumstances, that's pretty good. Yeah. And then you Rod, and is there someone else in the house? Well, there is someone else <laughs> that would be the boss who's in charge of virtually everything. My wife, Anne of 31 or maybe 32 years. Yeah. Hopefully it's 32. If not, she might smack me on the head, but but uh, yeah, yeah, we're all here together. And, and uh, so it's for us, we're very fortunate and we're very, very thankful 
And I will also say we are really, really thankful for ACT and all the, the fantastic work that they do. And, and kudos to you, Anthony, for a great job tonight. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I, I hope that uh, I don't crash and burn on this moment. Now, I have like two or three more questions left. Uh, Rod, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Well, I was born in Philadelphia. Some people call it Sillydelphia. <laughs> they do? I haven't heard that. I love it. When now, which part of Philadelphia? It's a, you know, sprawling metropolis. Well, I, I I couldn't really tell you the area, but I can tell you that yeah, I was born at Jefferson Hospital. Uh, Carlisle Street was the street that I grew up on. And my grandparents on Lancaster Boulevard had a, a store called Mary Moore Auto Supply. And that's how they Stop. made their living, with auto parts from the days of the first cars. Stop it. Mary Moore Auto Parts. Now, did Ford Mary Philco Moore ever Parts. have a sort of moment where you interacted with them? With well, Yeah. No, I remember being a little kid and going into their into their store and Uncle Morton would take me into the back of the store and they had auto parts going back decades. And if you had an old car from the 20s or the 30s, they had the part that you needed. Beautiful. It's okay, so impressive. Philly grew up in Philly, and the family had a, a car business. Uh, and then, when did you leave Philly, yeah. and where did you go when you sort of left the the womb? Oh, I I left Philly at the age of four, and and we came to Anaheim, California, and we we uh, we were there when Disneyland had its opening day, and we used Whoa. to lay on the roof. Of it in Garden Grove, California in the summer and watch the fireworks. Oh, beautiful. Pretty so cool. there you are, moved from Philly, went to Anaheim, Disneyland opens yeah. up, you get to see the fireworks every night. Yeah. And now here you are with your family and I'm sure there's still plenty of fireworks between you and the boss, Anne. All the time, all the time. All the time. They're bright right. and they're beautiful. <laughs> Well, Rod, I, I think I have some info here. I think I can make up a song. Uh, you know what? I think we should. We should just call it We've Still Got Fireworks. Yeah. All right. Here we go. This is We've Still Got Fireworks, all about Rod Marymore. Here goes nothing. There on Philly, South Street, Lancaster, on my feet. Can you see all the ways? Auto parts, sales for days. Here we just get a sandwich. Philadelphia steaks, man, it's gyms for me, Pat's for you, Geno's for these three dudes over here. And now we move on out to Anaheim. Anaheim, you're always on my mind. Anaheim, always on my mind. And you're always in my ears. Fireworks for years, tears bringing streets. Look at these Mickey Mouse ears on my feet. But I still got fireworks today. Still got fireworks every way. Got fireworks days. But I moved out to the West Coast. Best Coast, looking to make the most. And there's miles and miles still to go. Cause my Anna is the boss, she is the best, I'm blessed, and she's gonna make a mess if it's not 32 years, but 31 years, anniversary bringing me tears, so... Oh. 
and I still got fireworks for days. Fireworks every day. Am I happy anymore? Well, I'm Rod Mary Moore, and I got two kids who bring me so much happiness and joy. All right, Michaela, get your butt back from New York cause it's scary out there and I hope you're not in midtown Manhattan anymore when it's gonna be fireworks for days I got a fireworks for days cause I'm on this mountain of Chardonnay this mountain of Chardonnay and I got fireworks for days that's for you, Rod. Oh. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted, which means it's time for more shout outs. That's right. If you thought my job was done, you were totally wrong. We have one last round of shout outs. This is the final round. We have received an overwhelming number of $100 donations. I'm going to fit in as many as I possibly can right now. Rod, I hope you and the family stay safe. Good luck with all that Chardonnay. Here goes nothing. I should probably make this a super fast one, huh? Karen Muhlenberg, Mylenberg, I don't know the word. Gwen Soboleski, okay to the left of me. Richard Horrigan, gonna get a win. Cause Mark Saladino is just gonna mean yo. But Katarina Gao, holy cow. Lisa Collins, gonna just... Some some Manhattans with some Collins too. Jim Sciuto, Gail Finney, all right, Loretta Greco, Dan So Warren, Sandra Leon, then Peter Donald, Christy Seaman, OK Worth It, Joseph Penny, Jamie Wright, oh my gosh, all night, and Van de Belt, OK, did you feel or felt? Mara Lee Sayer, Evel Gallows, Elizabeth Broderson, all right, what, where, where are my daughters? And Beverly and Loring Wiley, Lynn Tuffield, Field, my voice with Thomas Eichner, Kenyon Chan, William Binkley, Robert Johnson, Catherine Manor, Christina Sturkin, Christina Richards, Blake Sternberg, Shannon Miller, Todd Gardner, Francine and Pat Devlin, Wevlin, Danian Davis. I just want to get you back in the mix because the last name tonight is Amy Fix. Oh my gosh, we did it. We did it. That's the end of the road. Oh, wow. And thank you so much to those who have donated during the lightning round. I'm stoked to announce that we reached our $5,000 match by Fred Levine. Thank you so much. And as I mentioned throughout the night, everything we raised this evening is being matched by ACT trustee Jerry Dodson and his wife, Tao. And thanks to all of you, we have met their $50,000 matching goal. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry and Tao, for the inspiration. You were amazing. And thank you so much for joining us and for supporting ACT and TBA. I'm so proud to announce that we have raised in total so far $308,000. I mean, 91999 to the rescue. We'll be continuing to accept donations online throughout the week. And guess what? We've just learned that ACT trustee Tony Remby is providing an additional $40,000 to match funds coming in over the next seven days. That is seven more days to raise 40,000 that Tony will match. I mean, come on, t -t Tony, you a catch. Can we match the $40,000 that you batch? Like I was gizmo, maybe I'm a gremlin. Don't feed me after night, your body's trembling. Tony Remby, Tony Remby, Tony Remby. Oh man, if you were as inspired as I was by all the moving stories, laughs, and explosive creativity tonight, I hope you'll donate if you haven't already and encourage others to support the arts. We'll be posting videos throughout the week of these amazing interviews, guest artist appearances, and musical performances, so be on the lookout. Thank you all again for generosity uh, of time, your generosity of spirit, and generosity of dollars. It means the world to us. ACT, Theater Bay Area, and I thank you for your continued support of the arts, which need you, our audience, to prosper and grow. 
It has been an honor being your host this evening. Be safe, be kind to one another, and peace out. Credits. I was the host. Appearance by Norman Green. Anthony Pusco. Uh, Richard O'Brien's Rocky Horror Show. Maya Phillips. Gaia. The Company of Poor Yellow Rednick. Be it gone part two. Jaime, thanks for that amazing video. Oh, what is this amazing human thing? It is an escape from reality and a place to make friends and express yourself and have fun. It brings the intimacy of the soul into public spaces. Julia McNeil. Dang, that's awesome. Storytelling brings communities together and sparks discussions. Oh, Monique, you did it again. Hmm, getting weird is good for you and definitely your hair. Hmm, awesome. Ooh, the MFA class of 2020. Kimberly and Emma, thank you so much. Oh, remember those young people with such low voices? Try to remember young conservatory ensemble. AC2 community programs manager Stephanie Wilborn. Ah, uh, Pam, Jennifer, I'm glad you figured out what you wanted to wear. My love, Peter, because you did to investigate life's most puzzling questions with a shit ton of other folks. Don't know why I gave them a British accent, but I did. It's real. It's actually happening right there in front of you under the watchful blue eyes of this beautiful person. Ah, uh, Peter is a million miracles at work in this room right now, easily. Are we on? I thought we'd have more time. Aw, oh, thanks, Tony. Ah, uh, the people are amazing. The collaboration is real. The stress is exciting. The coffee is free sometimes. And look, we've got Patrick Wilson will be there. I love theater because I get to create with my chosen family. Oh, Amy, thank you for choosing us. Christmas Carol, Man on Boats, Unfortunates. I love theater because I live for the drama. That's Alan Darby, future Tony winner. You've all just been put on notice. I can help to tell beautiful stories through music and my eyes, but only my eyes. Oh, so good. ACT Spring Forward team, event producers. Oh, Beryl. Special thanks to Speechless Studio, Janet Davis, Eric Bergen. I can meet new people. God bless us, everyone. That's Rachel. They play by Tiny Tim. I love theater because it's where I learned how to truly embrace all of who I am. Oh, I love that one the most. Oh, of all the badass fight scenes, let's not forget that. And badass smirks. I get it? I love theater because it allows us to be open and free with ourselves, our communities, and the world. Yeah, Melanie. And do stay safe, everyone. You can connect with an awesome community. Note that awesome was an afterthought. It didn't come naturally to this person. Someone had to give them that note. Theater shows me how to better love myself and others. Yes. Those were the credits, everyone. I love theater because I can make people feel better if they're sad and bring them into a whole new reality and make people smile. I mean, that's coming from Turkish fig number two. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. This is just intermission.